is for living. And at First International Bank and Trust, we're all about living, helping your dreams come true. Because we're not just in the banking business. We're in the first home business, the community sponsorship business, the how do I make this happen business, making your banking life easy so you can focus on what matters most. First International Bank and Trust, live first. family farm is, well, different. The cab of a tractor is the CEO's office. Board meetings are held on the bed of Grandpa's pickup. And a conference call is a holler across the yard. To hurry your chores, kids, there's homework to be done. A family farm is about family pride as much as profit. Farmers Union Insurance believes this way of life is worth protecting. Because this isn't just where we work, it's also our family's home. Farmers Union Insurance, simply different. Coming to you live from the Bonfire Studios North. It's another episode of Toros Weekly. I'm your host, Peter Theodos. Joining me as always is Ken Oda. And uh, <laughs> since Ken forgot our mics were hot, I'll go ahead and uh, give a quick shout out to my mom and my dad <laughs> who are watching the show as usual. Uh, yeah. Gotta love it. Off to a great start. Hot start there, Ken. Um, but yeah, another week, uh, not really much going on. We do have two guests this week, though, which yes. is a little bit different. So and we'll go ahead and bring in our first guest. Welcome to the show, Toros fans. Kristen Krull. Kristen, welcome to the show. Oh. There we go. Now we got audio for you. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, you guys. Yeah, so why don't you just give a, a quick background about yourself and uh, introduce yourself to the Taurus fans who may not know exactly who you are. Yeah, so my name's Kirsten. I just recently graduated from St. Cloud State University, and I majored in mass communications, but my focus was broadcast journalism. And during my time there, I spent two years as the ringside reporter for St. Cloud State men's hockey. And then I also served a little bit of time for about a year as an in-studio host for the WCHA Women's Hockey League, creating weekly segments for them, recapping what happened the previous weekend. And then uh, I have also worked for two years in the North American Hockey League, covering various events for the league. So it's a little bit about experience that I've had in the industry so far. Some Toro fans will remember you from a couple of years ago during our run to the Robertson Cup. You were um, you were there covering it from the league perspective. What do you remember from the, the Toros run that year? It was just an exciting – there was four exciting games all around and just the Robertson Cup too. Everyone that was in attendance was just so excited to be there, all four of the teams. I had a chance to speak to all of the teams that were in the Robertson Cup – the week before yeah the week before that they had officially started any play and all the guys were just so excited and all of the Minot fans that were in attendance too were very pumped they you know they put up a good fight too against Fairbanks why don't you talk a little bit um about how you prepare yourself for um the interviews whether it's a pre-game interview an in-game interview or even a post-game interview yeah so I think just all it depends what type of interview that I'm doing so what I like to do at least in my time in St. Cloud we had one day that was almost a media day to speak to players and coaches on the staff or anyone else that we needed to get for any stories that we were working on and so I was fortunate that I had one day a week to sit down face to face with like I had mentioned coaches players and anyone else from athletics that we needed to talk to and any questions that I had about you know the upcoming series I'd ask them then or if, if there was any storylines that I found from social media things personal going on in their lives I would maybe ask to get a hit on that too whereas if it's 
live game, then it's kind of a little different. You don't have as much preparation. The only thing that's kind of scripted out is that pre-game question or any hits that I have that I want to include or storylines during the game. Otherwise, when it comes to those intermission interviews or post-game, it's all on the fly. I have no idea what player I'm going to get. Um, it just kind of questions I ask, too. Sometimes I'll have one in my head and a player in my mind of who I want to get a minute before the end of the period or end of the game, then someone scores and that can change the, that does change the entire storyline. So there's been more times than not just last second I've had to completely change a question or who I was planning to get or sometimes too if I'm on the bench there's a player that walks right by me. And so then you kind of have to really think on the fly and everything kind of goes out the window. So that's kind of the fun of doing live game too though. You, you mentioned grabbing uh, some of those guys during the game. Uh, how often did you get to talk to a couple of Toro alum, Blake Lazat and uh, John Lazat, while they were at St. Cloud? I got to talk to them a fair amount. Um, Blake Lazat, we didn't get the chance to talk to him this year because obviously for anyone who follows along, he ended up leaving, I think it was two years early from St. Cloud State to go play for the LA Kings. So he's been doing great things out there, but Blake, too, was just one of the nicest guys I ever had the chance to interview, and he always had a lot of good things to say. And one of the things that just really stands out about Blake in particular is just you can tell he's a very genuine person, for one, very friendly, always willing to help someone out, but his love for the game and just his his work ethic as well. He's always putting in extra work and then as far as John Lazat goes another very friendly guy he's a little quieter but he uh, he's somebody too uh, who uh, he's I think he's a lot funnier than he leads on from when I've gotten to speak to him yes. but yeah he's a little bit more of a quiet guy <laughs> I think he's somebody who also like leads more by example too so he is definitely a lot more mature um do you have any good stories on either of those guys I from their time there? I'm trying to think. Um, I can't. I'll come come back to me okay. on that. Maybe I'll think <laughs> sure. of something um, for you. Uh, you know, aside from that, you mentioned before working the, the NAHL events. You, having worked with a D1 program, when you come to those NA events, how do those events compare to, to the D1 atmosphere? Well, First and foremost, there are a lot of overlaps between the two. I mean, a lot of the guys that I've interviewed at NAHL events, whether it be a showcase or a top prospects, I've come across a handful of them when I'm covering games for St. Cloud State as well. Like one in particular, again, going back to the Robertson Cup when Aberdeen won, um, Thomas Rocco was on the team. And then I forget the name, goaltender who was for Aberdeen. It's going to come back to me, but I'm just having Vernon. a mind blank right now. Yeah. Vernon. Yes, who plays for Colorado College right now. Just this year in particular, Thomas Rocco, he ended up getting signing with St. Cloud State and playing there. So I got to talk to him a bit throughout this whole year. And um, Matt Vernon as well, he came up to St. Cloud for a series too. So just as far as the player aspect goes, you know, I've come across – players from their time in juniors to then coming over to college as well so there's some overlap but also with the coaches too a lot of the coaches I've talked to are division one scouts that I see or have seen in St. Cloud or if I'm going on the road to other games but it's it's different but similar in a lot of aspects you know you talked about working the Robertson Cup and uh the showcase but we also saw this year that you were at top prospects are there any different ways um that you prepare yourself for the robinson cup the showcase and for um uh, top prospects uh, are there any differences or similarities between the two or the three um well starting with the showcase since that's the first and biggest event of the year that goes on that's different in the sense that as far as preparation goes, it's just doing a lot more um, formal interviews, if you will, with scouts and coaches and then people or players, excuse me, who are playing at the showcase. And, you know, it's just asking 
basic questions about the event itself and not doing game coverage, whereas top prospects and at Robertson Cup, that's all very similar to what I did at St. Cloud with like ringside reporting. It's all live game reporting as I'm going along. So the or you, we have a phone call that we get on during the, the week before we leave for those events. And then you talk with the hockey TV crew and play in color guys as well. So you kind of prep a little bit in that sense. But again, once it comes to those live games, you know as much as you can about the guys who are playing and their team background. But you're mainly just, excuse me, sorry, you're mainly just asking questions about the game as well. So the preparation is very different. What's been your most memorable event that you've worked, whether it's an NHL event or a St. Cloud event or even just some other event that you've worked? Uh, what's been the most memorable um, experience that you've ever had working a sporting event? Yeah, so I have a few that come to mind. I've loved going and I'm honored that I've been able to go out to um, Attleboro for top prospects two years in a row now. So that was an experience in and of itself and something super memorable because I never flew somewhere else to work an event before. But my favorite event hands down was Robertson Cup. Just being able to work a championship game or being in that atmosphere was so much fun. And, you know, just being with the guys who ended up winning the Robertson Cup too is just, it's, you kind of feed off of that energy and it's just so exciting. And that's hands down the favorite event I've ever got to cover. But Another, a couple more from college that have been fun. There's been some big series like playing against Duluth or North Dakota. Just the atmosphere in the rink just makes it fun and memorable. But we've won the Penrose Cup. St. Cloud State has two years in a row. And we covered the Penrose celebration two years ago. So they're all skating on the ice with the trophy and everyone's lined up doing a big celebration. So that was cool. And then being at Frozen Faceoff for NCHC was also another big event that they do at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. And I've got to be up in the press box for those events, and it's just a lot of fun. You know, while we're on the topic of talking sports here, um, some leagues, pro leagues, are starting to uh, implement return to play policies. Uh, what is your opinion on that? And uh, do you think they're going to work essentially? Yeah, well, as you look around the rest of the country, most places are in a spot right now where most things are reopened, but with restrictions. So when you're looking at these major sports leagues, they're finding a way to try to bring back their players and coaches and staff safely that they can go back to, in this case, finishing out the seasons that had to get put on pause four months ago. I think the NHL has done a really, really good job in particular with their plans and returning to play come August 1st with some exhibition games taking place before. So it took a little bit to get going, but I think the NHL, there's probably going to be a couple people inevitably who do contract the virus. I think the protocols that are in place, they're not going to have to suspend the entire season again. But one thing that does concern me, the NBA, they also had a good plan in place going into uh, their bubble down in Orlando, but just being in Orlando, the te if you will, the new epicenter, Florida in general, the new epicenter for the virus in the United States, that at the time wasn't the case when they decided to go to Orlando. But when you look at it now, it doesn't seem like it's as great of an idea. And then there's more guys too who are testing positive within the NBA. So I see the NBA having a lot more issues once play does return, and I'm not as confident that they won't have to suspend their season for who knows how long, but I'm hoping it goes off a lot simpler than we're expecting. And then as far as Major League Baseball goes, after what they've put us through the last few months, I have no idea what to expect <laughs> from them. <laughs> Yeah, Ken and I are big baseball guys, so we do a lot of baseball talking and all that. But you mentioned uh, 
the players feeding off the fans and yourself kind of enjoying the atmosphere of fans, do you think if pro leagues aren't allowing fans into um, arenas, stadiums, rinks, whatever you want to call it, um, do you think that's going to affect the way that players actually play? It's hard to say because I don't know if we've ever really experienced this before in this setting. Um, but I do think it's going to play a factor, but I think, I don't think that alone will be the deciding factor. I just think too, when you look at the time that these athletes have taken off and just having to go and in the NHLs, for an example, these teams having to go to the two hub cities in Canada, you're playing not on your home ice, you're staying at one rank, you have all of these restrictions. I think not only will skill be a factor, but mental toughness is definitely going to be huge because it's it's just going to be so different than I think anything that we've seen. So I do think not having fans there will be a factor. I think it'll just be very weird just because it's not something we've uh, gone on before. Yeah, before we let you go, we've, uh, we've talked to a lot of our players, 20-year-olds who are aging out of junior and – or guys who are in college, and we've talked to them kind of about what uh, what the differences with COVID have done, what that's been like for them. I I think you've got to be at one of maybe the scariest points of your life to have this going on. Just graduating from college, should be entering you know the, the quote unquote real world, and here you are kind of on hold. What has that been like for you personally? I'm not gonna lie, it's been very challenging. There's been good days and bad days, and you know, you're just hoping that things return to uh, as much of normal as they can as soon as possible. So it's it's been tough. Like, obviously, I, this wasn't what I was planning personally to be graduating into or even, you know, temporarily moving back home. That was definitely not in my cards, but it was the hand we were dealt. So I'm trying to find the positives in it. And in a way, I think there, there has been a a lot of good that's come from it, but it will be really nice to be able to get back to work finally and just to be able to cover sports again. For sure. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming on uh, Tours Weekly, and uh, maybe in the future we can have you back on again. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So that is Kristen Krull, and we unfortunately will have to let you go so we can get our second person on. And, you know, Pete, I think, uh, you know, that last question talking about a little bit uh, how it's not a great time for for students graduating college. It was a rough way to end the year for the 20 year olds playing junior. I think really any anyone in that transition period of their life in a transition period in their life when this all hit that that had to make it significantly harder. And you, you look at, you know, I think. A lot of times we talk about return to play and what that means for the athletes, but you know, I think you and I and and sports media in general try not to make it about themselves. But I know I've been going kind of crazy, not getting to do play by play or, or cover a game in now four or five months. Usually, you know, I'm at that point where usually our off season would be over and I'd be ramping up and getting ready, and here we're still kind of there's in still a, little a lot of question marks. Yeah. yeah, fans, let's welcome. Our second guest for this episode of Torres Weekly, let's welcome defenseman Ryan Peterson to the show. Ryan, welcome to Torres Weekly. Sean. Uh, there we go. We didn't have audio for you yet. Now we can welcome in Petey. Petey. Yeah. How are we doing over there? Good, good. How you doing, bud? Oh, uh, you know, just chilling. <laughs> Why don't you uh, inform the fans and give them a little bit of an update on uh, what you've been up to lately? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, um, I've just been working a lot. Uh, I work construction and landscaping um, just north of the Twin Cities. I'm from the Twin Cities. Um, been working five days a week, 40-plus hours, and then, you know, trying to fit hockey on the side a little bit. Uh, I've been skating three or four times a week um, whenever I can because ice is pretty limited up here right now with all the restrictions everything that's going on. So it's tough to find ice, but um, doing the best. Yeah. Well, that jumps us right into our next question is how how are you training with, 
with everything being kind of shut down you has it affected the way you would train um oh it has for sure i mean i i've been having to drive a lot further like a lot of times when i'm skating now i can't just go down the road to like a local rink where i usually would train i gotta drive to wisconsin or i gotta go somewhere out, out of the cities because everything's so booked up everyone's trying to get back on the ice so um it's it is different in that aspect where it's like it's harder to get ice and sometimes it's a little less you know convenient but you know, i mean everyone i mean you got to be skating so i mean it, you don't really have a choice right now but um we're getting it done doing the best we can and you know filling up on gas a little bit more than usual but that's not a big deal you know main camp's only a couple of weeks away so um what all have you been doing um you just described what a little bit, but what all like what training have you been doing to get ready for main camp? So what I've been doing is um, mornings, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I lift um, with a with a trainer, um, and it's it, it's a lot smaller groups this year because of obviously all the restrictions and what's going on. Um, so I've been lifting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, skating Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then um, every other Saturday and Sunday, kind of flip flopping. Uh, just a lot of like small groups again, more skill development, and then the weekends is usually like a four on four, five on five, more of a game type scenario. So that's been good. Um, Let's not yeah, forget the been... whole construction part too. That's that's not a easy thing either. So no, 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 it's not. <laughs> that's tough. Yeah, no, I basically yeah, that's a good point. I, some days, I mean, we literally are working from seven thirty a.m. to seven o'clock p.m. It's like twelve hour days and. So that's kind of like a, a workout in itself, but um, but no, but you know, it's nice to get in the weight room though, especially because you can kind of target, you know, what do I want to work on today, like what do I improve my, you know, on. So that that's nice, but um, yeah, just lifting and um, skating, skill development, and and some games too, as as much as I can get into. PD, our our coaching staff and. and potential future Toros are right in the middle of pre-draft season. We had a camp in Indiana last weekend, camp in Minnesota this weekend. You're one of the guys who came and impressed the coaches at the camp and you know, eventually made your way onto the team. What was your first camp experience like? Um, it was awesome. Um, so I had been, I had been, I mean, I had been talking to the coaches and scouts for mine for quite a while. Like Mr. Lonke introduced himself to me before my senior season of high school um, during elite league. He grabbed me after a game and set me up on a couple. Like I went and met the team in Austin, um, skated with them a little bit, watched them play. And then after my senior year, I came up to Minot to visit to see you know, if I would enjoy being all the way up in Minot. And I was up there for like a week and week or a week and a half, something like that. So I had a good relationship, you know, the coaches and, and um, some of the guys there before I went to camp. So, I, you know, it was, it was nice for me in that way because I, you know, I saw some familiar faces instead of just going in blind. Um, oh, but, you know, camp was, camp was good. It was local for me because I was from the city. So, I mean, it was in, I think it was in um, Andover last year or something like that. Um, so not too bad of a drive, but. No, it was just, you know, four days. It's a little bit of a grind. You get tired of playing by Sunday, but, you know, everyone's going through the same thing. So, you know, you don't have a, you don't have a choice there, but you just got to keep your nose down and, and work hard the whole time because everyone's fighting for a spot, you know. What was your reaction? Uh, obviously, you didn't get drafted and you got signed, but did that give you any extra motivation going into main camp? Uh, knowing that if you wanted a spot on this team that you were going to actually work and you were going to have to beat everyone out, essentially? Oh, yeah. No, it was very rewarding um, because and, – and it's just like – it's been told is like nothing – you know, nothing's set in stone because, you know, you got you – know, there were many multiple guys who were either drafted or, or, ten, or even tendered that – if they didn't make the all-star game, they got caught at training camp, you know? So, I mean, nothing's ever guaranteed. And I knew that, you know, so I knew if I just worked, you know, as hard as I could and played the way I know I can play that I'd have a, I'd have a chance and, and it felt good. So yeah, definitely. And then even coming into training camp in Minot, uh, did that, you know, weigh on you at all? Not having maybe that, Oh, I was drafted or tendered status. Um, when you were coming into town, did you still have kind of a chip on your shoulder because of it? Yeah, yeah, I, I, maybe a little bit, yeah. Um, I, I knew I had something to prove. 
um, for sure, because you know I'm, I'm sure there are people who can get complacent, you know, if they get drafted or tendered. Um, and I, you know, obviously I, I just had the kind of like a workhorse mentality going into it because I was just gonna do my own thing, and kind of screw what happened before. Now we're all here on the same level, so yeah, I just I, that's kind of like how I thought about it going in, and it apparently worked out okay. <laughs> Now, as a uh, as a second year guy, how has this summer been different than last summer, as far as preparation? Well, I mean, it's been a lot less stressful for sure, um, because you know, trying to figure out the whole junior path right out of high school is a little bit can, can be confusing. Um, but no, yeah, it's been a lot less stressful. I know, like, I, it's, it's I'm more prepared. I feel like because I know kind of what's coming, you know, what what I'm going to go through already. Um, so yeah, being a second year guy, I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'm itching to get back going again because obviously we were cut a little bit short this past year. Um, but yeah, no, I, I feel like I'm more prepared because I kind of know like what's, what's going to be coming and I can, you know, get ready to go. You know, you, you just mentioned being more prepared. What are your thoughts on this upcoming season? Um, with everything that was cut short, do you have your eyes set on any specific goal or achievement that you want to reach? personally or you want to help the team reach well i mean i think a pretty standard goal i mean every year for for austin minot is you know it's kind of what you learn when you when you play here is you, you know we're, we're expected to win we're expected to be in the playoffs obviously and um so i think that's a very kind of a standard goal is to win the division obviously and get to the robbie cup playoffs i mean that's that's a great goal to have going into every year i feel like in minot um, we're lucky in that aspect um, as we're surrounded by good guys, you know, good coaches, everything like that. Um, but yeah, no, for the team, obviously, hopefully win a division, um, at, at the very minimum, make playoffs, obviously. Um, but then see how far we can go in the Robbie. I mean, that's, that, that I can't even believe, like imagine what that experience would be like. Um, I think that's a great goal to have on uh, night in and night out. So definitely going into the season, you know, being in playoffs and making a run late. What about for yourself personally? Oh, for myself, just, just to improve as a player. Um, just, just to do like the work with our coaches and work with our uh, wags, our D coach on things that maybe I lacked in last year in my, you know, my first year as a junior player. Um, I want to be a little bit quicker, be tougher to play against. Um, maybe, you know, expand my game in the ozone i'm not really a point guy i'm more of a stay-at-home defenseman um so maybe if i could get, get up a couple more points on the board that wouldn't be a bad <laughs> thing um, um but yeah no just but for me personally i want to get uh, and that's part of you know what's been going on this summer for me is just working in the weight room getting a little, getting a little bit bigger um stronger uh, i want to be tougher to play against and kind of hone in on my role um for the team and that is to make people not want to Go the front of the net, basically. <laughs> you uh, <laughs> you mentioned working with Wags. How excited were you for him? I obviously we're all everyone's a little bummed when Marty left, but you have to be excited for for Wags and Waz for the promotions they're getting. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I you know I've Wag, Wag, Coach uh, Wagner. He's from Stillwater, so he's he's seen me play quite a bit, and we've I, I feel like we have a you know closer relationship. Um, and I know I was I was very excited to hear that he got the head coaching job. Obviously, you know, not, you know you can't say enough about Coach Murray. But I've, I I think you know behind the scenes, Coach Wagner does a lot more than people see, and he knows to get better than I think people know he does. Um, and I think I, uh, him and Waz will do it. I know they'll do a great job um, because they they're really good with the players. They you know they you know they keep us happy and. and when you have a good relationship with your coach, it makes you want to win and work hard and make them look good too. So I'm very excited. If you, as we said about your whole journey of not getting drafted and then making it out of camp, what would your message be to any player who doesn't get drafted on Tuesday, um, but has that opportunity to go to main camp? What would be your one message to them? Um, Honestly, it would, I, I touched on it a little earlier, but it would just be, you know, there, especially in this, I feel like nowadays with everything that's going on, it's really easy to make excuses for yourself and this and that, right? There's a lot of, a hundred things are, aren't are going your way, but it really just comes down to how hard you're going to work um, because no matter who gets in the door first, as long as you get in the door and you're all in the same arena, it's, it's goal time, you know? 
it's up to you. I mean, I just say, you know, keep your mouth shut and work hard and then just see what happens. You know, Petey, you, uh, earlier you mentioned that before, uh, before all that, you would come up to Minot for a week and a half to visit to see if you'd like it up here. Obviously now you've played a full year here. Yeah. You know, as, as someone who maybe had some questions about Minot before you became a Toro, how do you feel about the city, the organization after a year here? Oh, I mean, it, 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 it was, it's kind of like a 180 from what you think before you go to Minot and then once you've been there, because when you hear Minot, it's like, oh, it's way up in the way up in the sticks. Like, who wants to go up there? There's nothing to do, this and that. But, um, no, it's, it, it's not that at all. I mean, we, I mean we're, we're so busy with, with team stuff anyway. Um, so it's like you're with your team. You don't have to – you're not – you don't find yourself being bored. So you're already you're always doing stuff, and, and you're always surrounded by such good guys in Minot because of the people that they the, the players that they bring in. So it's like you have a great you're with great people. The facilities are great. I mean, and the town's not that small. You get up there, there's actually quite a bit to do and go. You know, a couple of great eats up up there. I love eating. Uh, Wesley knows that. <laughs> if he's watching. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you go to Ebb's Spicy Pie. I mean, geez, I'm I'm happy after that. You know, tough practice. Who cares? <laughs> I'm gonna get some food. So no, it's it's. I think there's a maybe a little bit of a bad rep just from location wise, but no. Once you live up there, and obviously like the billets are great. I, I had a I had a great time, and and you're surrounded by good players, so you're playing good hockey, and you're happy off the ice too. So I think it's a win win. Last thing before we let you go, or at least the last thing I have is what is your favorite memory of playing at the Mesa from your first year of junior? Oh, man. Favorite memory? Well, I, I, I honestly, I mean, I, well, I mean, besides some of the big games we won, <laughs> I think, honestly, one of my favorite memories or one of the funniest things I've seen um, was when there was a wedding at, between periods one night. And I just remember, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember, exactly what wet what coach wagner said to me on the bench like after that happened but it was something along the lines of like that isn't that just mine out for you and i just was like oh my god <laughs> i just <laughs> i thought that was so funny but <laughs> no that and uh i mean you know my, my first goal in the mesa was awesome uh that was awesome you know crowd went nuts and whatever and that was another cool memory too but but yeah no i just remember that wedding i just thought that was or that engagement <laughs> it was so Awesome. It was just incredible. I've never seen anything like it before. Only the Mesa could pull that off. <laughs> Petey, love talking to you, bud. Miss you. Can't wait for you to get back. Uh, and stay safe and keep working hard, bud. We'll see you a couple weeks at main camp. All right, awesome. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, Petey. Fans, that's Ryan yeah. Peterson. and Always a joy to talk to Petey. Never a dull mo moment when he's around. For sure. I think he's definitely – you and I, we're going to be out at main camp in a couple of weeks uh, out in uh, Wisconsin, and I think he's definitely got to be one of the guys we might go. Oh, 100%. I can't – I don't know how much we can use, Yeah. but I can't wait to hear what I'm he actually I'm just looking forward says. to getting to spend an hour following him around with a camera <laughs> and watching him chirp guys at camp. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah, uh, Tuesday – or no, in a week from yeah Tuesday. The Tuesday, yeah, this the this upcoming week, uh, we'll have draft coverage um, for you. We'll have we'll see uh, who the future we'll, Toros are. We'll have some of the picks on next week, I imagine, and uh, we'll go from there. We also need to get you a haircut. No, no, not at least till after main camp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fans, for Sean Bachoven, that's Ken Oda. I'm Peter Theaters. Thanks once again for tuning in to Toros Weekly. We'll see you next week.